sounds fine as well. Just wanted to give my thoughts and opinions on the uh, Trump's Department of Justice con continued attack on journalism, on a free press. So I believe it was yesterday that Trump's Department of Justice charged Julian Assange with 17 counts under the Espionage Act, Espionage Act, which to my understanding has never been used to target journalists, but it's being done now under the Trump administration. And even if you don't necessarily agree with everything that Assange has done or said or his politics or any of that, you know, kind of more personal stuff, we should all be concerned about this because a free press is so critical to holding those in power, those in our government, accountable for their wrongdoings and misdeeds. And this is a, a huge attack on a free press, on journalists, on particular national security journalists being able to do their jobs and cover issues of national security um, because this will have a chilling ripple effect to all, all of journalism, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Julian Assange isn't even a citizen of the United States. He's actually an Australian citizen, so and a journalist, but he's being charged under the Espion Espionage Act for, you know, releasing classified documents, um, you know, relating to our, our national defense and secrets of the state. And basically, but all he honestly did was provide the public with information about the war crimes that the United States military and government had committed for example i believe it was in 2010 in iraq the collateral damage um video that wikileaks released that was um uh, released to them by um Ch chelsea man chelsea manning which showed a i'm assuming it's probably an apache helicopter gunning down civilians as well as Reuter journalists and the pilots of that helicopter were actually laughing as this happened. They, WikiLeaks also revealed um, the torture that was that was that was happening and people dying from that. Um, you know, so <laughs> and it's not what WikiLeaks has released isn't anything different than, you know, what the New York Times or Washington Post or The Guardian or all of these other media outlets have have published um, over the years, but they've just singled out Julian Assange as kind of like a, a test case. You know, can can journalists be be charged under this under this act? Can we repress journalists? You know, Trump always uh, you know talks about how you know fake news and how the media is the enemy and all this type of rhetoric pointing to, you know, him wanting to <clears throat> silence his critics and anybody that's critical of his administration or, or anything like that. So we're just, it's just very troubling because we're heading down further and further to a kind of to totalitarian, authoritarian state where, you know, our, <laughs> literally our, the First Amendment is, is the freedom freedom, a free press, you know, for people, you know, in, in, in the news who publish things about news or, or, or world events or, you know, different, different things like that are able to do that freely. And this step sets a very troubling precedent around that because if he ends up being extradited from <clears throat> the United Kingdom to the United States um, with 17 char espionage charges which faces if convicted of all of those it's like 170 years in prison 10 years for each charge as well as the original 
charge that he was charged with, I think a couple months ago, was like helping to aid and basically breaking into a computer to access stuff, which supposedly he helped um, Chelsea Manning do, at least that's what they're claiming. But um, the United Kingdom won't necessarily extradite him now. It might even be less likely because he could face obviously cruel and unusual punishment for that huge amount of years and basically a death sentence that he would be, you know, life in prison because that's, you know, I don't know of anybody that's lived over uh, 170 years in, in prison. And then they also don't extradite to countries um, if that person could potentially be facing the death penalty and as well as um, Theresa May stepping down as the United K's um, Prime Minister and hopefully you know we'll get a progressive nominated to take over that spot you know somebody like Jer Jeremy Corbyn who has came out and said that he doesn't support that um, Julian Assange being being extradited and then there's also on the other hand what's going on with Sweden who is trying to get him extradited there as well and then they could very well likely extradite him to the United States so there's a lot of things going on right now but it's it's a very serious and and troubling issue and it all Jeremy Scahill on Democracy Now! Um, on today's edition, today's May 24th, he made a very good point that this all, this whole persecution of whistleblowers, of journalists, all started under the Obama administration, and, you know, these mainstream news out outlets weren't speaking up about this then, so this whole kind of process started to gain steam, and then we have Trump in the White House right now, who is just ratcheted up to a whole nother level. I think Obama's administration persecuted um, like eight eight whistleblowers and or combination of journalistic sources and the Trump administration I believe has exceeded that amount at this point so basically Obama laid the kind of groundwork for Trump to be able to you know go after journalists and whistleblowers in the extreme fashion that he has but it's all something that we need to be speaking out about and I haven't really heard a whole lot of politicians speak out against this um, maybe I honestly can name them on a handful like Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, um, Ro Khanna those, those only ones that kind of um, come to me off the top of my head there could there could be a few more but it's not it's not very many and it's such an important issue I know my I haven't heard anything from my elected representatives here in Washington State about this issue, which is, um, you know, pretty troubling. But we need to fight back and resist, and because you know, first, first they came after the socialists, and they came after, you know, the journalists, and the next will be, you know, coming after after everybody's freedom, which has obviously already started in a lot of ways with the, you know, Patriot Act and the ND and the ND and A Act and, you know, all these different types of things where slowly our liberties, our freedom are being, you know, eroded in these various, in these various ways and we oftentimes don't realize it because we're so distracted with you know, technology and social media and, you know, all these different types of things, but it's just kind of a crazy state of affairs that we live in where <laughs> it's just so crazy. Like, it's literally like living in a, a modern day 19, 1984 where we have Big Brother committing Big Brother in this case being the United States government committing these crimes all over the globe and we have this um, journalistic source WikiLeaks um, who Julian Assange is, is you know a co-founder of that organization releasing these documents exposing the US war crimes and instead of going after you know the people 
actually breaking the law, actually doing horrible things, committing war crimes, or going after the the uh, journalist and the organ and the person who released those documents for the you know betterment of the citizens of the United States and the citizens of the world, so they could be you know aware of the atrocities that the U.S. government was committing in in the name of the United States as well as, you know, using our money and resources in, in doing that. So it's just topsy, topsy, turvy world um, we live in. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say, but it's fucking nuts.